Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Android Development for Beginners tutorial. Today, we're going to do something pretty cool. We're going to create ourselves a secret chat app that's going to allow applications on completely different devices to share data using App Inventor. So over the course of making this video and this application, I'm going to answer a ton of questions that I get all of the time. So it should be fun. So let's take a look at what the finished app is going to look like. Okay, so here is my incognito app, and I'm just going to open it up, and basically you can just give yourself any type of identity, just so that you'll be able to find yourself in the messages as well as the people you're talking to. And then you'll to. be able to come up here and type in any type of message that you would like to send, and it's going to be going up into a server where other people will be able to fetch these messages from. So I just said, how are you? And I clicked on send, and then you'll see right there a little message sent box pops up. Then anybody that also has this application, everybody who has the application can communicate. You'll be able to just click on Get Messages, and here I'm demonstrating again, and you'll be able to just click Messages and pop up and see all the messages that are left on the server. So it's kind of a nice app. Here I am. I'm just going to put in a different name and then leave a completely different message, just so you can see on a completely different device that this is going to work and people are going to be able to communicate. And as you can see here, Sally is typing in, I'm great, and then clicks on send, and then message sent, and then you can come on here and take a look at all of the messages, and you'll see that there you go, there's Sally talking. I also added the feature that's going to allow you to clear all of the data, and of course you're going to see all this in the tutorial. And of course, if you go to this website right here, which I'll provide a link in the description to it, you're going to be able to come down here and click on Get Value. And whenever you click on Get Value, you're going to be able to pop over into another screen. And there we're going to have sort of like a secret phrase that you have to know to be able to get the values. And you click on Get Value, and you can get all the messages. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to make this app. Okay, so you saw the finished application, and it's pretty simplistic. I want to keep it simplistic, though, just so it's very easy to understand, so you'll be able to use everything you see in this tutorial in your own applications. So basically, what we got here was we're going to use something called the Tiny Web DB service, and this is free. You can use the service that's provided by Google, or if you would like, you can also create your own custom Tiny Web DB service. And here is how to do that. I'm just going to put the link to this in the description under the video. But basically, what it allows you to do is both store values and then get values from a web service on the internet. And that's going to allow you to share information between applications on different devices. So, pretty simple. So, to save some time, I went and created this interface. And it's just a really, really simple interface. All you have here is a horizontal arrangement. It's going to contain my message text box, which is where I'm going to type in my message right here then we're going to have a send button then we're going to have the message label right here this is going to be a label that's going to hold all of our messages just like you saw whenever I showed you how the app works this is going to get our messages this is going to allow us to give an identity and this is going to allow us to clear all the messages okay now I didn't actually create this app ahead of time I decided to just do it over here in the block section because it's kind of fun for me to do that all right so let's just come in here and we have to think about what we're going to use so we got our tiny web db over here and the very first thing to get out of the way is what are we going to do whenever an error occurs well you can see right here that this is going to allow us to catch any service errors that would occur and then decide on how we want to handle them now i'm thinking what would be a good way to handle them eh, probably just come over here to this list message label that we have and just print any errors inside of there because that's where the user is going to want to look anyway. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to grab set text and there we got it and then the message that was going to be sent if there is an error and we're going to throw it there and it's going to be displayed in our app. And I think for the most part that's good enough. So that's going to handle any errors that could occur. Then we're going to think about what are we going to need here. Well we're going to be passing a series of messages back and forth between applications. So I think if we go in here and create a variable that's going to make a lot of sense. And since it's going to be a whole bunch of different messages I'm just going to call it message list. And there we go. And then I'm going to have it be a list. We're going to be storing a list on this web service. So I want to create an empty list. 
and then let's think about what else we're going to want to do. Well, we're going to want to send messages, so that's something that we would want to handle. And there we have our send message button, and whenever it is going to be clicked on, we're going to want to do certain things. And I'm just thinking this out. Like I said, this is not pre-planned. I'm just sort of working this out as I go. Now we got to think about some things. Well, let's say that we want to always guarantee that there is an identity. Of course, that identity is whatever the person types in, but nonetheless, let's say that we want to have a, a, an identity just so we can track who is speaking in our message box. So, how are we going to handle that? Well, sounds like an if-then-else statement we're going to need. Let's just drop that right there. And let's think about where is our identity going to be put. There is our identity text box right there. And what we're going to want to get here from the identity text box is whatever text has been entered inside of it. So let's go and get this and drop it here. And then basically what we want to do is decide if this is empty, we are not going to allow the person to send the message. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can come up here to our text area, click on that, and then get to is empty. Let's drop that inside of there, and let's put this here. However, let's say that we want to check if it is not empty. So basically we want to do things if it is not empty. How do we handle that? Well, we're just going to come in here. Sounds like a logic issue to me. And there's a not. So guess what? That's going to work really good. And this is going to allow us to continue if they have entered an identity inside of there. Now we got to think about what exactly are we going to want to do. Well, I think we're going to want to add all of our messages to our message list. So we're going to come in here and we're going to click on lists and we're going to say add items to list and drop that right there. And the list we're going to want to be adding to, of course, is our message list. So let's just get that and drop that right there. And then what are we going to want to add? Well, we're going to want to add an identity, have some sort of separation between that and the message that's going to be sent. So we're going to need to get ourselves a join right here with the text and drag this over here, drop it right there. And let's say that we also want to have a new line after the message. So each message takes up just one line. So that means we're going to have to have four of these guys. Okay, so what are we going to have here? We're going to get the identity, which we have already checked and we know is there. Grab that, drop it right here. Then we're going to want some sort of separation. Let's just say that I want a colon. So let's come in here and put a space. And of course a quote, there we go, and there we go. All right, so now we're gonna have that inside of there, that colon, and then let's also think about where we're gonna get our message. Well, over here with the My Message text box, that's gonna contain the message that they wanna send. And let's go and get the text from it, and there it is. And then, like I said, if I wanna put all the information on separate lines, I'm gonna put a backslash N, and that's gonna give me that. Okay, so now I just added the new identity and message to our list that we're going to be storing. So let's just go in and store it. So how do you do that? That's actually pretty easy. Just go over to the tiny WebDB, and we're just going to get store value. Drop that right there. And then we have to give it a tag. Everything is a key value pair. This is the key, this is the value. Even whenever you're storing lists. So let's say I want to give it something. I'm going to call this app incognito. So let's call it uh, incognito message list. So there we go. Drop that right there, and then we just have to pass along our message. So, pretty easy. Duplicate this, drag this, drop it right there, and there we are. And then let's say that we want to call our notifier and then, you know, show an alert that the message has been sent. Message sent. There we go. And what else could we want to do? Um, maybe we could want to clear our message box. I mean, so that when every time they want to type in a new message, this area is going to be clear. So we're going to go in here to my message text box right there, and we're going to go to the text area, and we're going to clear that. So let's go set, drop this right there, and then just put in a blank nothing space. Trying to think of anything else? Well, I want to handle if they did not put an identity in here, so I'm going to need to put an else inside of here. And I'm just going to, again, call the notifier here, and I'm going to show an alert. Drop that right there, and we can say something like enter an identity. There we are. So that'll just be pop up there if they didn't enter an identity, and of course none of this is going to happen if they didn't. And as far as I can see, that's going to be all I'm going to need to do. So the next thing we need to do is we need to retrieve messages. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to wait until they click on the button. So let's come up here and go to the click area. Drop it right here. Let's drop it over here so we can get away from this. 
and then we're going to have to go to the tiny web db and to get values we just call get value so it's not that hard drop that right there and then to get our message we just have to pass the tag and that's going to get it so it's pretty easy and let's go and get myself a little bit more room here think about some other different things and that's that's literally all i'm going to do they click on this and it's going to go get the value pretty simple so what else would I need to do? Well, the way this works is it asks for the value and then you have to call another method called got value to actually get it. There's gonna be some things we need to check. So just come up here to got value right here and let's drop that right there. And let's think about some things that we're gonna need. Well, I'm gonna to wanna to cycle through all of the messages. So that means I'm gonna need an index. That's just gonna be a value that's just going to be incremented. And let's just grab this, drag it down here, and let's drop it right here. And I'm just gonna call this index. And the very first value is gonna be the number one because that is where we're gonna start in our list. So put a one in there. And then as I'm cycling through this, I'm also probably gonna to want to store the messages in a temporary value. And then after that has been done, then I'm going to want to add them all at one time. So I'm gonna create another variable and let's grab this. And let's say, I'm just gonna call this messages. Okay. And let's just give it a value of nothing here in the beginning. And there we go. All right, back to got value. So what are some things that I'm gonna to need to do? Well, one thing that I'm probably gonna to wanna to do is I want to check that the value that has been returned is a list. So that means I'm gonna need if then else, let's grab this, drop it right there. And if I wanna check if what they return to me is a list, let's just come in here and let's look for is a list. Da, 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 da. This is the way it works whenever I do things out of my head. <laughs> is a list thing. Yep, that's what I want. Drop it right here. All right, and then to check for it, this is the value that's returned. I'm just going to put that there. Then, if it is a list, what am I going to want to do? Well, I want to make sure that my index is set for one. So I'm going to get that. Drop that right there. And let's just duplicate this. And there we go. What other things am I going to want to do? Well, I'm going to also, just to make certain here, I'm going to verify that the messages also have nothing inside of them. Again, this isn't optimized. This is just me working out of my head. So let's drop that right there. And then what am I going to want to do? Well, I'm going to want to cycle through all of the messages. And so that means I'm going to need a while loop. Basically going to say, while I still have new messages, I want to continue cycling through them. And I could use a for each, but I'm just going to use while. So there the while is, drop that right there. And then my test is basically going to be, I'm going to cycle through and continue getting these as long as they exist, which basically means I'm going to continue doing this as long as the index is less than or equal to the number of items that are in the list. So let's come up here again, and I'm gonna have to get math and get this guy. Drop that right there. I'm gonna get my global index right here, get, and I'm gonna keep increasing that as long as it's less than or equal to the length of my list. So I'm gonna have to go into lists and get length of list right there. Drop that right there. And the list I'm gonna be working with is gonna be this guy. So let's just duplicate this. And then I have to think about what do I want to do while I do this? Well, I basically want to assign to my empty shell here called messages, all the previous messages, as well as all of the new messages that I'm gonna be getting out of this list right here. So I'm gonna go set and get the messages. Drop that right there. And then I'm gonna do a join, so text, join, drop that right there. I'm going to get all of the previous messages. So I'll get another one of these. Get, in the beginning of course, it's going to be nothing because that's what I have right here. And then I want to get the next list item out of our list that we pulled from the internet. So go back into lists, select list item, select list item, and I know the index, and there we go. Then I want to actually get this list, so duplicate. Whoops, leave that one there and grab this one instead. There's our list. And then the index that I want to use, of course, is this guy. So get, drop it right there. And that's gonna get each of those uh, identities as well as lists and or messages and store them all in messages, just like you saw when I demonstrated the app. And of all of these blocks, of course, are available in a link in the description. All right, so now what do I need to do? Well, I need to increment index because I just got the first one, so I wanna get the next item in our list. So I'm gonna set a value for index and I'm going to add them. Let's duplicate this, drag this over here, and I'm gonna to have to do some math, so go into the math section, and I want to add, increment one, 
grab index, put it right there, and then a number one. And that's going to increment that. Okay, so what else am I going to need to do, if anything? Well, basically after I go and I get all of the messages, I'm going to want to display them in my, my uh, messages label. So, list of messages label. And I'm going to say that I want to set the text for this. And make sure you do it outside of the do loop here, or the while loop. And what's going to go in there is going to be messages. So, I just have to call messages right here and get messages. And there we go. Okay, so now let's go in here and let's make our clear button work, which is going to clear all of our messages from the database and everything else. So let's come up here, go get to click, drop it right there. And then what I want to do is I want to clear my messages list. So I'm going to go and get my messages list, which is way up here. There it is. Get that, drag it down there. Let's see if it's still there. Yes, there it is. Well, actually, I want to get the set messages list. No big deal. There it is. Down here. And then grab it and put it right into place right there. Like that. And then I want to completely clear the list. So I'm going to go up into the list section and go to create empty list. Drop that right there. And then I want to make a call to store value for my tiny web DB. There it is. Store value. Drop that right there. And the tag I'm going to use is the same tag as I used right here. So let's just duplicate that. Drop it right there. And then I want to do a get message list. Should have kept the one that I created before. There that is. Get it. And then I want to drag it down here. Slap that into place. And then let's say I want to call the notifier and put out a note that all the information's been cleared. Drop that there. And let's just say data cleared. So I'll put a message on the screen. Then I have to think about if there's any other little housekeeping things I want to do here. I didn't do it before, but I think it would be a good idea for whenever everything is initialized to pull information or messages from the database. And I'm also going to be calling the database a whole bunch of times, so why don't I just create a procedure for that? So let's just go into procedures and create a brand new procedure. Just drag it out of here and throw it right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this get data from web and what it's going to do is exactly what I have the retrieve messages button doing right now which is just this stuff right here so I'm just going to actually I'm going to pull that out of there and then I'm going to drag it down here put it here and then in the retrieve messages button area right here I'm going to call that so get data from web so I'll be able to pull all that from the little procedure I created so that'll be useful then what I can also do is come down here to screen one and when everything is initialized right here, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to call get data from web and that's going to update the messages whenever the screen or the application starts. So that'll be useful. And let me think about some other things here. Um, I'm going to also want to make sure that I keep all of my messages both at the user that I'm communicating with or the people that I'm communicating with as well as my own messages. So one way to do that is to come in here and store that message list which is going to be everybody else before I come in here and try to add in new messages. So what I want to do here is I think I want to store everything in the message list right there. So let's go and get the message list and let's say set message list drag this and let's put it right here right after we check that it's a list all right then what I'm gonna do is say I want to get this and store it there so what I'm gonna be storing here are the messages that are currently on the message board so that I don't delete those and let me see is there anything else I want to try to do I think that I also want to get data from the web whenever this is called up here. So once again, I'll be adding, I'll be sending my message and I'll be adding on top of this right here. So I want to go and I want to get data from the web as well. So let's just come in and go over here to this procedure and get data from web and we're going to throw it in right there. So that is everything 
and I'm going to go test it right now and actually the app that you're going to see is going to be what was at the very beginning of this tutorial. Just wanted to leave a special note for you guys that I am giving away a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. This is currently March the 25th. You have to uh, go to in the description for this video there's going to be a link to the contacts and until March the 27th of 2014 you're going to be able to go on my website answer some questions if you get them all right you'll get into a live drawing to maybe win a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 as well as a Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch so if it's not past March the 27th go check that out and please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time